So, I'm working backwards somewhat here. Instead of building up saturation, I've got this overpowering orange red from the gradient map, and I'm composing by painting out the saturation. Here is a quick way to bring back in value when things start getting muddy. Stamp visible, which I think is Control alt shift e by default, and then either desaturate it, which is Control alt shift u or copy and paste the color channel that looks best into a new layer. Use that as either a soft light or an overlay type layer, and then adjust the fill to taste. Uh, one of these days we'll cover the difference between fill and opacity, but until then, for most applications, fill works best. Here we are revisiting the focal point contrast booster trick from the sketch phase, but we are adding some color and we're using a reflected type gradient. So I'm thinking we can use a little bit of a color complement here in front of her, uh, both to pull some of the focus away from that fire and to balance things out a bit. Uh, I think maybe a cool light source coming from below might be nice, and that way we can also outline the profile of her face with a rim or a kick light. Moving along, I could muck about with color schemes forever, but at some point we've got to pick one. So let's just see how they compare. Just for experiment's sake, let's see what the hot foreground and the cool background look like together. And let's also try it the other way around. Alright, well I've decided on the warm scheme and now I'm just tweaking it a bit. Now I'm going to use the rough as the base for a drawing. I put a light gray layer on top, name it, lock it, and make another layer for the drawing. Most of this is pretty self-explanatory. I am only putting in what I need to clarify and I'm not overburdening the thing with lines. Like here, I'm going to need to design this face thing, and I don't think I want it quite as simple as it is in the rough. If you don't already know the liquify tool, you should. It is super fantastic for small adjustments of all sorts. I think I'm going to design this on a different layer, and that way I can experiment without worry. I reduce the opacity of the rough sketch layer, and then I add a new layer to do the refined lines on. I'm reiterating the spiral composition that we had a little bit on this face thingy. So now I'm defining the bulk of the headdress, which, uh, for the sake of the demonstration, I think I'll do as a rougher material. Maybe like an old hand-pounded metal. Your Steve's useless tidbit of the day is that hammering metal with the round end of a ball-peen hammer to get those little divots is called planishing. I didn't actually go to school for art. I had always planned on going into medicine. But after I started making a living as an artist, that's when I started taking classes. It's a little backwards. Uh, including a couple metal fabrication classes. In fact, besides figure drawing, most of what I took were how to build awesome stuff classes that were probably not meant for artists. And that would likely explain the quizzical look many of the shop professors greeted me with upon handing in my blueprints. I made a dragon out of rebar in my welding class. Here I'm just figuring out a way to connect the headpiece element with this sort of draping thing with all the trinkets and sigils and beads or whatever they end up being. Since a lot of you probably already know how to draw and watching me do it for the next 20 minutes is not really going to be helpful, I'm just going to super fast forward here. It should be pretty clear what I'm doing, so there's no need to overwhelm us both with boredom. Okay, now that there's enough of a drawing here, I'm going to color the drawing layer so that it's not stark black and start refining the painting. Now I do keep a copy of the drawing layer at the very top hidden just for reference. Essentially all I'm doing at this point is clean up. The plan is already there and the loose way that we've arrived at the color scheme gives us a lot of subtle color changes within the rough composition. And because I work this way, I don't typically have a palette of colors on a separate layer like you see a lot of folks doing. Instead, I just use the color grabber and adjust here and there in the color box. So, this is the first surface we'll talk about. Skin. Skin is tricky because... Partially because it has so many unique contributors, 
but mostly because we are hardwired to judge the condition of skin. Subtleties of skin and complexion tell us whether a person is healthy, it indicates emotional state, lifestyle, we can even tell the ambient temperature by a person's skin. So when anything is not quite right, it's really easy to tell. Part of your job as an artist is to know why and be able to correct it. Now, not to shortchange you on this lesson, but I could spend days talking about the contributors, structures, and properties that bring so much information and subtlety to human skin, and I'd just be getting started. Let's call that yet another lesson for another time. But in the meantime, when in doubt, remember that skin is quite translucent, and so it will always respond to light comparatively softly. Your cast shadows will be soft, your soft shadows will be softer, and because light enters the skin, collects color from keratin, melanin, and blood, it comes back out as a much warmer color than it entered. One thing this means is that all along a shadow line, you will almost always find a distinct warming of color. Don't go nuts though, one of the consummate noob mistakes is to oversaturate skin, and everything else for that matter. Try not to pummel your audience with color. Subtlety just tastes so much better. When something is looking too flat, I'll often create a new layer and rework the form with exaggerated values. So far, the shape of her face is not really reading. It needs more volume, more definition. So I'm gonna define a light source sort of above and behind us. And I'm making this a warm light to distinguish it from the blue. And then I tone it down and blend it in. Now, skin is shiny in spots, and a few highlights really bring out the shape, but use sparingly. For big, soft areas like the cheek, the highlight will be broken up. And I just happen to have a custom brush for that, which I will cover custom brushes some other time. So stay tuned, or subscribe to my newsletter, steveargyle.com! I'm not sure what I want to do with the lips. I think they could be a little darker, but I'm not sure if I want much color in them or not. So, surprise, surprise, new layer! Let the experimentation continue! And now, just a little refinement here and there. Not so hard, eh? So one of the things that we just did is we created a lighting scheme. There's a blue kick light coming from the left and below, a soft warm key light coming from above and behind, a warm fill above, a cool fill below, and let's not forget that some things will be hit directly by the firelight. Uh, this is just to help visualize, because it's really important to keep your lighting consistent. I'll just put this up with the drawing layer for reference and hide it. I'm still just playing, but I think I want to bring a little more contrast to that profile edge. On to the next surface. First, I'm going to paint in a mask. On a new layer, of course. I should charge by layer. In no time at all, I could afford my very own Batmobile. And now we'll make this a multiply layer type and adjust the color until it looks right. And clean things up just a little bit. So we decided to make this shiny and maybe a little metallic, but not steel or chrome or anything like that. But anything that is smooth will tend to sharply reflect. The highlights will be quite bright, and if the base color is dark, you'll get a lot of contrast. So in cases like this, it's very important to understand the form and to apply the lighting accordingly. Since we've already defined the shape of this surface, we can make a selection from it, which hold control and click on the layer thumbnail, create a group, and make a mask out of this selection. Now, so long as we're working under this group, you don't have to worry about staying in the lines. Everything you learned in kindergarten is for naught. I started with the highlights because this is such a high contrast surface, now I'm blending in with some transitional colors and adding in that blue kick light. This is pretty shiny, I think overpoweringly so. I'm going to go back to that highlight layer and tone it down. Then I will add that bright highlight back in, only much tighter. 